We will organize it in the form of the round table with the main topic, which is our obsessive topic today about our frustration and fascination with the Europe, European Union. So the topic will be uh, European construction, final crisis. In fact, this is a kind of the quotation of the promise of the new book uh, by Professor Paribar. It will be the third book about <coughs> Europe. He already published two books on Europe. So whole debates will be about the Europe. You are also welcome to speak to us, to comment, to critique us. Please to participate in this debate. Uh, just you know, asking for uh, for words, for uh, reaction, and you you will say your name, please, and then you can st start to speak. Uh, so we will organize this in sense small question, but the participants of the round table, and then commence and answer it, uh, of um, uh, Professor Balibar. The context of this one is cultural, political, social. You know, Europe. Uh, our Europeanization of Serbia and all of this issue and other context which I want to mention in front of you to understand it is our new 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 edition uh, which I'm very proud that it will be published upon the, the name the name of our school so it will be the the series of the book <coughs> as in the name of the protest against the um, uh, book published of Europe by Brussels and European bureau uh, bureaucracy, which, which publish every year 100 million books, which is apologetical books about Europe. So we want to publish here the book from German, French, and English language about Europe, but beyond the ap apology of the Europe, the European Union. So uh, I want to invite uh, the Professor Balibar to, to, to understand what it would be our, our uh, uh, intention, not only published intention, but also intellectual. So we will publish uh, Professor Balibar, including your book already published, We Citizen of the Europe. We will publish the book Habermas, Ach Europe, Peter Slotida. There's a new one. It's new one. It's published a year ago uh, in German, and we both copyright, and we will publish so the leading German philosopher, a uh, book from G German, it will be published in Serbian language, it's, co it's called, uh, uh, it's called Ach Europe. Second, Peter Sloterdijk, also leading German philosopher, <coughs> if, the, if Europe once wake up. So it will be second, the book of our new edition. Uh, Rudolf, Rudolf Gachet is the next book, it's the most brilliant book. Uh, uh, about the Europe is called is called very interesting title of the book, Europe, uh, or, or infinitive task of thinking uh, Europe itself. Zygmunt Bauman, he is coming here by the way, and we will publish his book, Europe, uh, unfinished adventure. So then, then we will publish the book of your friend, Wallerstein. It will be book of uh, European universalism, rhetoric of power. It is extremely left-wing critique of European Union. Then, brilliant book, Ulrich Beck, which is called um, Cosmopolitan Europe, Ethereum Balibar book already published, it will be published in this edition, which is co called uh, At the Border of Europe, We Citizen of the Europe. So, and then more, uh, more, more than 20 new titles. So we will be first publisher in Serbia and much wider in whole former Yugoslavia, which will, which will publish the series of the book, uh, Europe in sense of critical rethinking of Europe. So this seminar, this round table is also dedicated to, to, to this affiliation, this pretension to start to think critically about the Europe. So this is, this is our program for uh, afternoon from 1 uh, to 2.30. To, to so is there anybody who wants first to ask the question? Well, I can start with the question which will Remind be... Remind me your name or first name. Uh, Yelisaveta. Elisaveta. Yes, Elisaveta, yes. 
Okay, maybe for the beginning, you know, like uh, I, I would like to start uh, with the title of today's presentation, but also as a title of your few book to come. Well, I have <laughs> to say something about that. But please, ask you. please. <laughs> No, go ah, ahead. Okay, no, just, yeah, I, I, I'll be very brief. Uh, you have in the title this phrase, final crisis. So I'm, I would like to, uh, to hear a little bit how we should read this final crisis. Should we read this as a possibility of change, mm -hmm. for, of opening, of alternative mm -hmm. ideologies, mm -hmm. or we should read it as an apocalyptic yeah. tone of... And of despair. Yeah, yeah, despair. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Um, um, I guess uh, some of you were already there an hour ago, but many others have arrived. So uh, I take one minute, but I need that to uh, uh, repeat what I had said. I mean, which, what, what an honor. What a pleasure it is for me to uh, uh, come to Belgrade for the first time in my life, meet uh, 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 friends whom I have known or with whom I have collaborated uh, over some time now, and meet new uh, or make new, uh, uh, establish new friendships. And believe me, I'm very sincere. This is not only a personal, sentimental uh, consideration, it's also very directly linked to the uh, questions that you are raising because I am firmly convinced that uh, we can understand the situation in which we find ourselves only through conversations, confrontations, and possibly even, uh, uh, um, uh, say, uh, um, contradictions, I mean, contradictory uh, uh, debates. We are not located exactly in the same places. We are not the same age. We don't have the same background. We're not working in the same disciplines. So we perceive the situation in different manners, and they are uh, vital for uh, our understanding of the situation. Now, um, uh, returning to the um, very generous uh, um, um, presentation that Professor Savage was uh, um, making of the uh, series in which uh, um, uh, you want to include my, uh, my coming book. Um, it's, uh, of course, uh, embarrassing for me to find myself in the company of Habermas, Sigmund Baumann, Ulrich Beck, and so on. Uh, on the other hand, um, um, <laughs> I do believe there is something like uh, an intellectual um, a, a community um, in Europe, uh, which has, of course, also um, connections as, and correspondences with other people all around the world. Uh, um, uh, a well-known figure of post-colonial studies, now considered a, a leading uh, um, a theorist, uh, called Deepesh Chakrabarti, published some years ago this book with a provocative title, Provincializing Europe, uh, which is a great book, by the uh, way. And what he, of course, uh, demonstrates is his deep uh, understanding and his deep familiarity with European culture and European history, and certainly the intention, which is to relativize the pretensions of Europeans to keep thinking of themselves as the center of the world, is not to eliminate uh, uh, the consideration of European culture and European uh, uh, policy. So we are we're all part of that. This is a conversation that urgently needs to become uh, 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 continued. And I'm proud and, and, and uh, um, uh, very uh, happy to be part of it at my uh, level. I already contributed to that, and I will continue to do it as much as I can. Now, the book you were referring to, Europe Final Crisis, uh, uh, I'm not sure uh, uh, will exist. Uh, and I tell you why. Uh, I was imprudent, in fact. It's been announced already twice, uh, uh, at least, by the publisher. Because uh, some months ago, uh, a French publisher, um, not a big publisher, but who does very good stuff, 
um, came to, I had just published this uh, uh, essay or this, uh, uh, which came out in, on The Guardian in English about one and a half year ago, when the Greek sovereign debt crisis broke out and we could witness the first effects. Uh, the protests of the uh, 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 an important part, not, not everybody, but a significant part of the Greek population, the trade unions, uh, the students, etc., um, um, against the uh, um, austerity policies that were uh, already at the time imposed by, I'd say, a combination of uh, transnational monetary and financial agencies and the European Union itself. And I felt it uh, important, like others, to express my uh, thoughts on this. And they were somewhat dramatic and pessimistic. Uh, so the publisher came to me and said, look, you published a number of essays in the past on the European situation. They are uh, impossible to find. Uh, uh, why don't we republish them and add some more recent uh, uh, thoughts of yours on the situation? I thought, great, that's a great idea. This is what I should do. And I said, OK, we'll do it. And then, of course, they announced the book. You know? And then the situation kept uh, going on, evolving. And I, it's not that I abandoned my ideas, but I realized that the situation was becoming more and more unpredictable. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's more than ever the case uh, uh, today. So, you know, I'm not a journalist. I'm not, uh, not even a political uh, uh, theorist. Uh, I do my best to uh, combine what I've learned reading uh, economic theory, political theory, uh, cultural uh, uh, theory, um, and uh, uh, intervene in this uh, 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 debate. It's unlikely that I will be able to join the uh, conversation that you uh, uh, identify uh, in the uh, coming weeks. And above all, I believe that the old essays are now really outdated. I mean, we are in a completely new uh, uh, situation. What Habermas is doing is very important. It's great. He's just published another mm -hmm. uh, 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 book, which is probably based on his most recent interventions. Very courageous interventions. I mean, uh, uh, um, um, criticizing what he did not hesitate to call the new nationalist stance of uh, ger uh, um, a German policy, uh, advocating a strong democratic counter uh, power or counterweight to the more technocratic policies that are now adopted by the European uh, Union with great uh, hesit hesitations and etc. So I, I'm, I'm basically in agreement uh, uh, with that. Uh, I believe the title of his most recent collection of essays is Die Verfassung Europas, so the Constitution of Europe, probably taken in a, not only in a purely formal juridical sense, but in a more in a broader political sense. I would very much like to contribute to that uh, debate, but it will have to be in the form of a, uh, a, a shorter and also more coherent book, mm -hmm. if I can. And so what you're announcing, I'm sorry to disappoint you, is not ready. Okay. And these conversations are part of my preparation. OK, excuse me for being too uh, self-referential and narcissistic. Now let's go back to the uh, 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 question, apocalypses or uh, uh, renewed uh, possibilities of, or both at the of same both, time. Yeah. That's the problem. You know, we are exactly in the middle. As I see things, uh, as I see things, we are exactly in the middle of the river, uh, and we don't know if we are going to be uh, 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 carried. Uh, I mean, pushed by the uh, the, f the, f the flow or if we can build something like a, a dam or a, a bridge. But when I say we, when I say we, I believe it's very important to understand that uh, uh, this we includes everybody that is in this room today. That sounds, that sounds strange, sounds strange for two reasons. Uh, one, uh, the Balkans and Serbia in particular, Croatia, etc., are officially 
uh, not part of the European construction. Uh, so they are something like uh, behind the door, behind the door, knocking at the door. Uh, I also know, of course, that inside this country there must be very strong anti-European feelings and for complex uh, uh, historical reasons. So I'm sure there is an anti-European party, but there's also an increasing pro-European uh, uh, um, uh, 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 opinion which, uh, uh, I repeat, uh, um, uh, um, is like that, knocking at the door. As if the Europeans, as if the Europeans, that is the French, the Germans, uh, uh, the British, etc., had some sort of right of possession over the European uh, 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 policy. There are administrative and uh, 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 legal reasons for that, but it's important for us to understand that the future of Europe is not entirely in the hands of Brussels with other uh, people like passive uh, uh, observers or uh, more or less uh, uh, subordinate uh, uh, members of the club. Uh, so that leads, that leads to the second uh, uh, reason. <coughs> Again, this may sound a little uh, uh, abstract or, uh, or utopian, which is that um, Europe is being, has been built as, a, as an institutional uh, entity, as a political project, has been built essentially from a top. Uh, and now everybody is lamenting, is lamenting the fact that there is this democratic deficit. Uh, we have to be careful in this respect. It's been built from a top, if you like, like uh, first of all in the circumstances of the Cold War and then later uh, in the circumstances of the, uh, say, reunification of the European continent through decisions made by governments. And these governments were not acting against the majority of their population. So there was a sort of uh, uh, support, maybe even majoritarian uh, 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 support, but essentially it meant that what the governments were doing uh, uh, was uh, uh, just and uh, legitimate and they could be more or less trusted. During the same period, something began to uh, uh, become increasingly uh, uh, the case. Um, uh, um, it's not that Europe became unpopular among its own uh, populations, but the populations, the French population, the German, the Italian, today the Greeks, of course, more than ever, uh, uh, ceased to be entirely convinced that the development of this project would be for their own deficit. Uh, they could, uh, um, they, 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 they witnessed an increasing uh, uh, power of the European bureaucracy on which they were not uh, uh, sure that they had um, a, a real influence. The governments, the French government is played a very tricky game. Whenever they had something, they had to do something unpopular. Uh, um, uh, cut social services or uh, uh, adopt uh, um, uh, uh, economic uh, restrictions, they explained to the French population, and believe me, the French government did that. Even the socialist government uh, uh, before uh, Sarkozy came to power, that this was imposed more or less by the European bureaucracy. Whereas they could present themselves, they would present themselves as doing their best to protect the interest of the majority of the uh, uh, population. This did not, of course, make the European uh, uh, a Union very popular among the, 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 the most, uh, uh, the less privileged classes. And now when Europe, at a point which uh, um, uh, can be uh, located more or less in the uh, uh, second half of the 1980s, uh, after, of course, the fall of the uh, uh, Soviet system, this was increasingly uh, uh, the case, uh, progressively rallied the um, economic orthodoxy uh, according, uh, or the neoliberal orthodoxy, according to which um, the uh, uh, um, essential uh, objective is to make 
uh, again, the European people's more competitive on the global market, that is, either cut salaries or cut social services or transform the educational uh, system in a more utilitarian uh, uh, direction, this, this uh, impopularity, if you, if, you, if you like, was uh, uh, growing. Uh, so my conclusion from there is not only that there is a democratic deficit in, uh, in, in Europe, my conclusion is we are really at a turning point, and I have no certainty about where we are going uh, uh, to go. The crisis, the financial crisis, um, the uh, possibility that the euro either be uh, rescued, but under the conditions of uh, 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 severe uh, uh, budget uh, uh, cuts and uh, um, uh, austerity policies, or collapses, which I'm sure uh, uh, would be catastrophic for uh, uh, every uh, um, uh, European peoples, because the other, the new uh, national currencies would be uh, 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 extremely weak, to, would have even less possibilities to resist uh, um, uh, financial uh, uh, speculation. This is a, is, a, is, a, is a situation in which we need more uh, this is my conviction, but I don't know how it will uh, practically uh, take place. This is a conviction, uh, uh, this is a situation in which we need more than some, if you like, uh, uh, a moderate degree of democratization of the institutions. Uh, more powers to the European Parliament, of course. Uh, more possibilities for uh, uh, the European citizens to control the uh, uh, actions of their leaders, of course. But historically speaking, this never existed without, I'd say, movements. You know, I'm not calling for general strikes. I'm not calling for rebellions. I'm not calling for revolutions. I'm calling simply for a greater degree of popular uh, um, awareness, for more uh, uh, confrontations, for movements in the uh, um, uh, young generation of the type uh, Puerta del Sol or Occupy uh, 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 Wall Street, etc., to increase the degree of political participation in the European uh, space. And I, um, uh, this is not a miracle solution. I mean, it doesn't solve the problem. But without that, the problem cannot be uh, uh, solved, not even nationally. And I repeat, uh, in spite of the uh, uh, distinctions, the legal uh, uh, differences, you are also uh, 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 part of this. So my, I'm not here to say something like, uh, you should say this or you should do uh, uh, that. But of course, intimately, uh, uh, my hope, and we will discuss about that, would be that you support the idea of a more integrated uh, uh, Europe. You support the idea that Serbia, Croatia, and all the Balkanic ex-Yugoslav countries become fully uh, uh, admitted in that uh, uh, club or in that uh, community, but you support it critically. You support it critically. You express your own uh, uh, um, uh, needs. And, uh, and, and, and demands so that, so that uh, 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 Europe is not made, as a French uh, right-wing newspaper wrote a few weeks uh, 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 ago, on the shoulders and the back of the, of the, of the, of the peoples. Let, let me, let me to, to suggest yes. in this line um, uh, your uh, reflection uh, considering the relationship between the concept of Balkans or ex-Yugoslavia, including in the Balkans, and Europe. So you are a philosopher and thinker who is always trying to think this relation, impossible relation, uh, let's say in self-ironical way, between Balkan and uh, Europe in very responsible way. Let me to remind you that in the first chapter of your book, We Citizen of Europe, you insist that we cannot understand European project as unfinished adventure, as, as a project, political proje project is, is, which is in fact in, in process of permanent construction, reconstruction, yes. without 
without, this is the point of my uh, comments, reaction, understanding that what is happening in Balkan, former Yugoslavia, is nothing extraordinary. It is a part of regular history, past history of, uh, of Europe, which you, in fact, insist uh, to call European race relations relationship. So I need uh, a clarification why you insist that, the, that this relationship must be read in, inside the concept uh, ra race relationship. And second, it's also in the chapter uh, six, the same uh, paragraph of the, of the first uh, chapter of your book. Even you go, you go in farther insisting that, the, I'm quoting you, that the fate of the new European identity as a whole is being played out in Yugoslavia and more generally in the Balkan. Uh, uh, only the Balkan can uh, offer to way when Europe can put itself into the question, look at this, and transform itself. Mm -hmm. And point of your sentence, only then will Europe probably begin to become possible again as political project. So you deeply re re co uh, connect, reconnect uh, the destiny, political destiny of Balkans and European destiny. So what is your position today? You know, this was written <coughs> in a very dramatic moment. I mean, it was dramatic above all for you. I mean, this this part of, of, of the continent. But I was, like many others, believe me, I mean, I was not the only one, of course, uh, very um, uh, deeply, very profoundly uh, shaken I mean, this, uh, um, by this uh, uh, situation. And, um, and I was looking for words which would uh, uh, express the... Um, uh, what I consider to be the, uh, the, 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 the dramatic stakes of this, of this situation. So I, I'm not, uh, I do not regret that I uh, wrote that. Um, uh, the term race relations, of course, had, um, had, was, was very, um, was very um, uh, directly linked to um, the issue of what was called at the time ethnic cleansing, ethnic purity. I um, am trying not to pure and simply uh, uh, use all these categories as interchangeable. I'm aware that one has to be careful. Um, uh, 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 there is race, there is culture, there is ethnicity, there is religion. All that is a complex uh, uh, system of, uh, uh, say, identities, uh, memberships uh, or belongings in communities. But already at the time, I, um, well, I, first of all, I was reacting against a sort of uh, uh, euf euf euphemization of ethnic conflicts. Uh, um, uh, both here and in, in more generally in the, in, in the world, um, where the uh, um, uh, uh, categories of race and racism were uh, uh, avoided uh, because, in fact, uh, 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 nobody wanted to face the kind of um, violent and extremely violent um, uh, uh, forces and um, um, uh, effects, in fact, of ethnic uh, 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 conflicts. So it was a sort of provocation, but it was also a way to, um, to, to start a study which I've continued since then, which has to do with uh, the question, what is there <coughs> in all these uh, uh, what identity politics, these forms of identity politics, which establishes a, f a, a link. And the best expression I found for that, uh, I take from my friend and master, the great philosopher, French philosopher Jacques Derrida, 
who um, uh, used the expression, I'm not, I'm not sure he invented it, but used the expression, the genealogical scheme. Uh, all these fantasies of purity, of ethnic cleansing, of religious uh, um, uh, antagonism have something in common, which is the genealogical scheme. To uh, identify, I, I'm not denying that, of course, we have ancestors. We uh, derive part of our identities from our uh, uh, predecessors, our um, our parents, our families, our tribes, however you want to call them. But the, the, the imperialism of the genealogy, uh, genealogical scheme, the idea that uh, um, uh, uh, human groupings and, and communities are essentially based on a common descent or a common tradition, rather than communication or uh, 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 political constructions, which of course by necessity must include people of many different origins and, and, and many different backgrounds is a, is a, is a, is a murderous uh, uh, force in, 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 in history. And you know, it can take place at many different levels. Uh, in fact, there's no privileged level uh, because the issue of uh, 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 descent purity, uh, uh, strangeness, uh, um, uh, hybridity, multiculturalism is something that can take place in a, in a, in a, in a city, in a town, in a, in a local district, or it can take place at the level of a nation, or it can take place at the level of a continent. So if you explain that, for example, there is something like a European identity, which is based on the fact that this is a, a continent whose culture was uh, essentially made by Christianity, and therefore uh, uh, people of Islamic uh, uh, descent cannot be really part of that. This is the genealogical scheme uh, 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 once again. Uh, so maybe this is a vague uh, 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 analogy, but it nevertheless points at something, I, I believe, crucial. And in situations of uh, uh, economic and social uh, uh, crisis, um, so the comparison with the 1930s is now everywhere around us. Again, we must be very careful. Nothing repeats itself in the same uh, uh, manner. But there are disturbing uh, analogies. We've already witnessed the way in which uh, uh, economic and social causes, very violent by themselves, who own, which owe absolutely nothing to the genealogical uh, uh, scheme or the identity politics, nevertheless crystallize and precipitate, so to speak, uh, um, uh, 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 the violence also on that side. So I have a sort of, I don't want to be paranoid, you know, but I have a sort of uh, 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 alert, uh, 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 alarm system in my, in my head. Take another example and I will finish with that. Um, uh, this text you are referring to uh, uh, was in a large, to, to a large extent, about Europe's attitude towards Yugoslavia. I mean, I was, what I had in mind was why are the Europeans who officially label themselves like that, uh, look, why are they looking at the Balkans, including Albania, etc., um, uh, uh, as if these were foreign bodies in the, in the, in the middle of, uh, of, of, of Europe. You use the phrase Europeanization of Serbia. This is, a, 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 this is an incredible phrase, you know. Already at the time, and it can come from the inside, of course, as much as from the outside. Uh, I read, I believe I found the phrase in that form for the first time in a writing by the great Albanian uh, uh, national uh, 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 novelist Ismail Kadare, who was speaking, uh, writing about the Europeanization of the Balkans. And I thought, Europeanization of the Balkan, what does that mean? If, uh, does it mean that Balkan is not part of Europe and therefore has to, or culturally, and has to become Europeanized? I mean, this is absurd. Uh, so, but I was speaking uh, 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 about all this uh, in Greece, you know, with Greek friends I have. Over the years, I have a very long uh, uh, association with Greece. I have had Greek students. The only university in the world where I have a honorary doctorate is Thessaloniki, I mean, uh, and so on and so on. So, um, so and, the t and, the, and the text and the lecture had the title At the Borders of Europe. 
And again, in a somewhat paradoxical manner, what I wanted to say was you uh, are perceived to be on the uh, edge, on the borders, but actually you're in the center. Uh, you're in the center because your problems are not essentially different from the problems that take place in the center. Now, more recently, with the Greek debt crisis, this came back to my uh, uh, mind. And I'm forcing a little bit, when I read in uh, French or German or North American uh, uh, newspapers, very uh, um, uh, arrogant, and despising commentaries about the Greek uh, uh, situation, picturing the Greek you know, as a lazy population which uh, uh, now are uh, harvesting the inevitable consequences of their own uh, um, uh, uh, culture, I thought this is, uh, uh, again, a form of, of, of racism. Uh, we, and we have to be very careful about that. I'm not denying that there is huge corruption in the Greek uh, 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 society and economy. But believe me, there is huge corruption as well in other uh, uh, European countries which present themselves as uh, uh, above that. We just learned that uh, the presidential campaign in France uh, uh, only uh, 10 years ago had been entirely subsidized on the side of uh, uh, at least one and perhaps two uh, uh, candidates, not only by uh, the money coming from uh, uh, African uh, uh, um, uh, uh, companies and, 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 and heads of state, which has been the case throughout the history of modern France, but also from very dirty uh, 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 business um, uh, weapons uh, 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 traffic done with Pakistan or, or, or Saudi Arabia. So, of course, Greek is corrupted and Greece is, co is corrupt, but France is corrupt. Germany is, 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 is corrupt. And this is the background on which I react to these ethnic stereotypes concerning the different parts of Europe. And just more, just more intervention and then the other. A uh, couple of weeks ago, our common friend Gil Gil Anijar was here. And then we debate. He's a provocator in his own right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then I we like and so then much. we debate uh, something about your uh, presentation at Columbia. It was very soon, and then um, we debate in sense: Are you European thinker, or you are thinker of Europe? So, if you are European thinker, for a second, let's say then you, are, you must be some kind uh, Eurocentric, okay? Let's uh -huh. say it this way. So if you are European thinker, yes. by definition you must be Eurocentric uh -huh. in yeah. your theoretical discourse reflecting okay. of the I Europe. I hope not. I hope not. Okay. Hope not. If you are thinking on Europe, then you must allow it inside your uh, uh, philosophical discourse uh, devoted to the question of Europe and uh, putting the Europe into the question uh, uh, self-reflective distance, distance of European thinker from itself. Yes. So you must put, if you are uh, European, not European thinker, Eurocentric, but if you are beyond this, if you are th critical thinker of Europe, then you must allow permanently, intrinsically, that your theoretical uh, perspective must be deeply rooted in the concept of the permanent critique of Europe beyond its own border. And final, then it, 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 it's what is the consequence? Must be consequences that you must always to start to speak of um, um, cosmopolitanization of Europe. Well, uh, how you react on this? No, I react with three short uh, uh, phrases. Okay. I always say short and they become very long, but uh, <laughs> you'll cut me. Uh, first, um, um, narcissism and um, collective narcissism and um, self um, self despise or self uh, um, what's a good term in English self uh, uh, yes or hatred is too strong but uh, denigration if you like if you can say that are symmetric. Uh, uh, um, uh, effects, <laughs> effective uh, 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 positions and uh, discourses 
which are both, uh, in fact, uh, uh, very, uh, very dangerous and harmful. It's like it's the old story of philo-Semitism and anti-Semitism. Uh, uh, none of them is better than the other. Uh, so, uh, um, and this can be uh, extended, I believe, to philo-Europeanism and anti-Europeanism. Um, <coughs> second, um, it's always good to learn something from the enemy, uh, in Schmittian uh, terms, mm -hmm. and especially the political enemy. Yeah? And I have no difficulties to uh, uh, identify, it's not always easy, I, I'm not trying to classify everybody into friends and enemies, but still, you know, adversaries. Yeah? A good deal of my uh, um, uh, work and reflection on these issues of nationalism, racism, um, uh, etc., um, as Peter Bojanic was recalling very generously yesterday night at the uh, Belgrade Cultural Center, reading something he took from uh, uh, an autobiography interview I had given, I forgot that I had given that, uh, uh, arises from uh, the early uh, uh, 1980s in France. Um, I had been, my political <coughs> commitment was very strongly um, framed and uh, influenced by the fact that I had been a student at the time of the war uh, in Algeria, and the colonial war in Algeria. So I was part, of course, of the movement against the war, as sometime later, not long after that, uh, American students were and intellectuals were deeply influenced by the Vietnam War. This was the whole uh, story of that period. But then this apparently was more or less uh, 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 finished, except that in the early 1980s, we witnessed the emergence in France of a very virulent nationalist and racist party. Today, this would be called populist. No, and this would be called populist. But these are all euphemism called the National Front. And they started winning local elections. Now they have a candidate, a woman, uh, who is likely to, 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 to win a very uh, uh, um, a high uh, proportion of votes in the, in the coming uh, presidential election. Uh, in some years ago, her father, who was the historic leader of the National Front, uh, came second in the presidential election. This is not nothing. This is not nothing. Huh? So I became aware that this was not something of the past. And of course, this nationalism and racism was very strongly anti-European. It remains anti-European, but it was mainly uh, uh, anti-Muslim, uh, uh, anti-Islamic, uh, 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 and anti-immigrant. You know. And this guy, Le Pen, had a, a, a favorite uh, motto. This is where I learned from the enemy, I know. His, uh, which is very vulgar. Uh, but you find the equivalent in more sophisticated forms uh, um, uh, uh, everywhere. His favorite motto is the following. If I have to choose between uh, uh, my uh, um, daughters and my cousins, I will choose my daughters. If I have to choose between my cousins and my neighbors, I will choose my daughters. If I have to choose between my neighbors and the people from the uh, 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 other country, I will choose my neighbors, and so on and so on. So, so my, I have a tendency to reverse that. Huh? Uh, not to choose, this is absurd, but to adopt the point of view. Huh? to adopt the point of view, not of what is nearest to you, but of what is apparently, apparently uh, farther, further, uh, furthest to you, uh, uh, the difference. And then this merges my third, it's too long again, but a uh, 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 phrase, with something that comes from the uh, old structuralist philosophical debate. At the time, um, this idea of distanciation or decentering, as, uh, as some philosophers would uh, say, the subject is not centered. The subject is decentered. Uh, the, the, the Lacanian, especially the Lacanian brand of uh, 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 structuralist theory, um, uh, um, uh, combined with 
uh, of course, psychoanalytic uh, 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 theory was especially insistent on that. The idea that the place where you are is not the place, as a subject, is not the place where you think uh, or where you, your thought is becoming uh, uh, located and rooted, so to speak, because there is this gap between the conscious and the unconscious. So that sounded very abstract at the time. You know, this whole structuralist motto of decentering, of distanciation, <coughs> or a, a distance within the self. But today, in the political circumstances in which we are, it now resonates, from my point of view, in a much more concrete uh, 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 way. Uh, this is not only a decentering in the abstract philosophical sense. It's a decentering in the geographic uh, uh, sense. It's a decentering in the social uh, uh, and economic uh, uh, sense. Chakrabarti's book that I quoted, Provincializing Europe, could be also called decentering uh, uh, Europe or distanciating uh, uh, yourself. So you're still rooted somewhere. Of course, you cannot avoid that. Uh, you, you cannot, uh, uh, you can dream, of course, of becoming an Indian or becoming an African or uh, 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 becoming uh, uh, Russian, etc. And this is, uh, uh, of course, a very powerful Im motive in the I I imagination. Ultimately, of course, uh, uh, it does not depend on, 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 on you. And it would be absurd in, in, in a sense. Uprooting is not better than rooting in the absolute sense. But decentering, uh, and at the very least, uh, through precisely uh, 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 dialogue or conflictual uh, 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 exchanges with others, becoming able to think about your own history, your own uh, uh, situation, from a distant point of view, and therefore also inevitably from the point of view of uh, 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 others, receiving their questions uh, and taking their uh, um, uh, answers into account, this has become the very condition of, I'd say, uh, 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 political and philosophical um, uh, um, seriousness in in today's world. So, so this is this is this is the cosmo the, the, the cosmopolitical uh, um, uh, uh, perspective uh, in which I try to locate myself. This is true. Thanks. Yes. I saw your discussion with uh, Zygmunt Bauman uh, on Litz. It was very interesting. But uh, then Bauman mentioned something which, in my opinion, can be very very interesting. He said that we are now living some kind of separation between politics and the power. And also, when Zizek spoke about uh, Wall Street movement, he also said that we have some kind of diverse between... Uh, uh, kind of divorce? Uh, divorce? Divorce, yes, yes. or separation also, yes, between, uh, uh, let's say, democracy and capitalism. Uh -huh. Do you think that it's really new situation in, let's say, now between uh, thinkers, in front of thinkers, to think, let's say, all crises through that glasses, let's say, that something really happening behind and which is causes that strong crisis in Europe and in the world, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Incidentally, uh, this, uh, <coughs> this situation, this meeting to which you refer, where I had this uh, dialogue with Zygmunt Bauman, it was something like uh, two years ago in Leeds, I believe. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's been very important for me, you know. For years, I had been uh, trying to uh, meet uh, Zygmunt Bauman. Not that I agree with everything he writes, but I think he's an extremely uh, uh, creative and uh, important thinker. Um, and uh, also, which is not nothing, uh, his life, so to speak, is a sort of uh, uh, epitome or, or summary of uh, uh, European history. 
uh, across the division of East and, 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 and West, and through the most dramatic uh, uh, moments. He's an old man now, very alive, but uh, 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 of, this, uh, of, this, uh, of, this, uh, of this trajectory. So I had been wanting to meet him and talk to him, and I was even accepting invitations for conferences in different places where he'd never show up. So you know, I was always disappointed. He was announced as a, did you invite him here? Uh, yeah. Is he, OK, yeah. we'll see if he comes. I mean, he's, uh, uh, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, so. OK, let's return to your question. Um, Bauman has a concept of uh, the fluid society. Yes. You know? And uh, 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 this concept, which is, I'd say, half uh, empirical, because, of course, it's based on the uh, uh, description of a number of uh, economic, uh, social, cultural phenomena which, so to speak, uh, uh, have um, uh, reversed, reversed the traditional balance of forces or relationship of forces between fixity, territoriality, um, um, uh, institutions uh, um, uh, uh, themselves linked to power institutions linked with territory, uh, etc. And on the other side, circulation, processes of circulation uh, um, uh, of, uh, uh, of course, goods, uh, capitals, people, information, um, uh, um, uh, images, uh, discourses, and so on. So this is, is based on empirical data, but it's also very speculative. It's also very speculative. It suggests something like uh, we were not completely aware of that, and uh, in fact we are in a different world, in a different civilization, where all of the uh, 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 previous uh, um, frameworks or, or um, uh, references are no longer uh, 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 working. There is a, a sort of a sort of utopian element, I believe, in Bauman's uh, 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 description. Um, I don't know if we can be as uh, as uh, uh, radical as that, but I do actually uh, uh, believe and share uh, uh, with him the idea that some fundamental um, relationships of power <coughs> and forces which used to um, form the structure uh, of our societies and frame the, uh, set up the stage, if you like, on which we uh, perceived of ourselves as political actors, citizens. Uh, have been dramatically uh, reversed in the last period. And the crisis of the European, the, f the global financial crisis um, uh, taking place now, its consequences on the construction of Europe uh, are clearly linked to that. Uh, um, uh, I, we have to be careful, uh, you know. If we say, for example, uh, everything is now transnational, the national uh, uh, framework is no longer meaningful. A moment ago, uh, uh, one of you, one of the uh, uh, students working for the student TV, uh, asked me a question, very good question, about uh, the relationship between democracy and national, and national, uh, um, and nation state. And I said, this is complicated because the nation state is the framework in which particularly in, in Europe and owing to social movements, the popular France, the resistance and all that, uh, 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 a certain degree, a certain amount of uh, uh, democratic um, control of power has been uh, 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 reached. But it's now very rapidly dissolving and losing its, uh, its, uh, its, its, its capacities. If we were not in Europe or in Northern America, but in China, for example, or in Brazil, 
or in India today, maybe we would have a completely different perception of, 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 of those things. But still, they are taken in the same uh, 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 chain. And this is a revolutionary change, in a sense. I explained uh, a few weeks ago in, a, in an article, an essay published in the French journal Libération, uh, just uh, two weeks ago. Uh, and this is now translated uh, in, into many languages, so you can find it on the web. It's called The Revolution from Above, you know, from the top. Uh, that uh, the relationship between economy, financial economy, and politics is changed. And the financial, what I tend to call the global financial market, GFM, I would try to popularize this, uh, this uh, uh, to coin this uh, sigla, huh? you know, this, uh, this acronym, this acronym. There is the IMF, International Monetary Fund. There is the uh, World Trade Organization. I want to coin the GFM, Global Financial Market, is now increasingly controlling the states. Uh, this reverses the relationship of power. Uh, the states put themselves, to a large extent, in that situation, and now they face the consequences. They uh, transferred progressively an, an, an enormous amount of their uh, budgetary resources from taxes to uh, uh, credit and to international uh, uh, loans. And now they find themselves in the hands of this anonymous, amorphous, amorphous, uh, fluid, in a sense, in Bauman's sense, fluid entity, uh, which, of course, performs political actions, produces political effects, but is not officially a political uh, 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 power, is not officially a political body. And as a consequence, the citizens uh, that we are, of course, more, who more or less know or, 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 or believe they know how to politically influence the uh, traditional political authorities, the, uh, through elections, through uh, um, uh, strikes, through a popular movement, brutally find themselves uh, uh, disarmed uh, and, uh, uh, in fact, uh, um, I wouldn't say terrorized, but uh, um, uh, uh, panicked, panicked, uh, this is the case, because they realize that uh, uh, the powers who now increasingly control their lives, either directly, because we all need credit, we all need uh, uh, um, uh, that, or indirectly, because the states who are supposed to protect us are in fact themselves uh, 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 um, um, uh, part of the uh, uh, new credit or debt uh, uh, economy. These are powers we do not know how to uh, uh, to uh, 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 control. The, we are, we're not even sure of what kind of counter powers we would need. If you strike because uh, 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 the, the factory you're working for or the firm is closing uh, uh, their, uh, their factory in, in your country, they don't care. I mean, they, they just close the factory and they open it in a, in a, in a different country. So you can strike. I and mean, this started already 20 years ago. Uh, uh, the, the huge strikes in, in France and Britain and other countries led to what? Not, not any possibility of controlling the global or, or simply counteracting the power of the global financial market, only accelerating the... Uh, 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 the, 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 the shift, uh, the, the change of places. When Eastern European countries like Poland uh, and Czechoslovakia became parts of Europe, the uh, um, uh, workers there uh, benefited from this uh, 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 shift because they had uh, lower wages. But now they will uh, uh, lose it in favor of China. Or, uh, so what remains are symbolic movements. Uh, they are not nothing. They are not nothing. In a sense, they are part of this fluidification that Bauman describes. Because when there is a movement called Occupy Wall Street, of course, nobody believes they are going to uh, uh, um, invade or take power. It's not like the... Uh, 
seizure of the uh, uh, Winter Palace in 1917. I mean, you cannot seize Wall Street like that because, in fact, Wall Street is not there. Wall Street is anywhere in the is anywhere in the, in the world. So it remains purely symbolic. But then it echoes other uh, 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 movements which are taking place in Spain, even in uh, uh, something that is taking place in uh, in Egypt or, or Tunisia, in spite of all the the huge differences. So this is very. This is physically, I would say, and politically very weak, but it's symbolically uh, 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 gaining uh, strength. So we'll see if uh, um, uh, a more balanced equilibrium of power is uh, uh, emerging. But it's true that we've changed the uh, uh, world. I mean, we've changed civilization. So, uh, two questions. Um, first, um, reflecting on, on the growing Euroscepticism in Croatia, and I would assume that is no different here, particularly among the liberals. And the liberals? Liberals. Yeah. And, and relating to, um, to the problem of discourse or tropes of internal, mm. internal or self-colonization. Uh, for the longest period since 1990, or yeah, since 1990, as the political transition started, the notion of stability was equated with the European Union. And much in the discourse of the European <coughs> Union deals with the stability. Um, now that European Union has become less stable, or now as certain implicit contradictions of the constitution of European Union are, are rising to the fore, uh, European Union doesn't seem to be as stable as it was always promised to be in our processes of political turmoils. So the, the general story was once we come to European Union, there will be a relief from social antagonisms and conflicts and mm. wars and um, exclusions that, that mm. have marked the last 20 years of, uh, of mm. politics here in this yeah, region, in Croatia right. or in, 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 in Serbia, Serbia or yeah. elsewhere. Mm. And uh, now that uh, the European <laughs> Union seems much less of a stable project, now that it requires to, uh, requires a discussion too as to what it is from a very broad uh, perspective, not only as it was always put into question by intellectuals and problematized by intellectuals, but really by broad uh, European people and peoples of uh, countries bordering European Union and in the process of becoming members of the European Union, for us, it means we have to lead two debates. We still have our unfinished debate as to our internal instability and contradictions of our political constitutions. And we have to lead uh, also the debate about the instability or uncertainty of European project. Mm. And my question would be, are those two at all two different debates? Aren't they ultimately the same debate? Isn't, for instance, the issue of Kosovo within the scope of the debate of, uh, of the economic crisis that is now precipitating the, the inner contradiction of European Union? And now the que second question would be um, the, the, so Habermas has this great idea that uh, citizens of Europe have double sovereignty in the European Union, that they participate in the process of governance or uh, in, in the political process as members of their state. So they are already uh, given legitimation to their legal leaders to uh, enact things through European Union. This is this top-down perspective of the European Union. Mm. But they are also citizens of European Union having particular rights which they do not have within the context of their nation states. Mm -hmm. So they have double or split 
sovereignty. And in this process of managing uh, the crisis, it is the element of this top-down that is gaining upper hand, that is becoming dominant as so far as Council of Ministers and uh, European presidents and prime ministers are those who make supposedly urgent decisions to fend off the current crisis, while they don't have the political legitimation to do that other than from the perspective of their individual nation states. But Europe, citizens of Europe are not only citizens of their nation states, they're citizens of European Union. So there is the crisis of legitimation or deficit on the side of them being citizens of Europe, so on the side of European Parliament. So my question would be, how do we democratize the process of crisis management? And I think it's there that Europe stands or fall. And how do we fend off that crisis is an urgency that allows us to um, undermine the institutions that are at least implicitly there in the process or in the constitution of European Union, which to my mind would be similar to the way the U United States undermined the democratic process in the aftermath of 2000, 9-11. Uh, yeah. Because it, basically the, the executive gained uh, an upper hand. And you see what's taking place now. I mean, I jump on this last remark of yours and I return to your, as I can, I mean, to your, I wish I had answers for these questions, um, uh, to your previous questions. But what is, what is amazing in the, uh, um, in the uh, development of the American um, political situation, which of course for all of us is a permanent reference and we, have a great interest in understanding what is taking place there because it's also uh, our own uh, fate that depends on it, is the very rapid uh, uh, shifting um, within 10 years, in fact, uh, between a situation in which apparently, I say apparently, uh, the executive power uh, was concentrating uh, everything in the United States and uh, um, um, uh, to a situation where now the widely shared uh, uh, idea, impression, is that the executive power in the United States is paralyzed, is completely paralyzed. And this is not due to the fact that uh, Obama is a weaker uh, uh, personality than Bush. I mean, in, basically, Bush was a much weaker personality than Obama. He was under the influence uh, of a group of uh, uh, ultra-conservative uh, 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 ideologues, and, 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 he, and he was not really making decisions. Uh, <coughs> it's, uh, it's, in a sense, it's, in a sense, the consequence of the uh, 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 fact that the the, the, the global uh, conditions are now um, influencing and constraining, I would say, what you call the crisis decision making, uh, even and perhaps more than uh, uh, anywhere else in what used to be and remain to some, remains to some extent the most powerful uh, 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 imperial state in 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 in, in this world. Now to return to um, your previous um, um, your previous questions, I I'm very much uh, I have a great sympathy for what Habermas writes. Uh, in this essay uh, that I published about a week or two weeks ago, that I referred you to, I wrote something which. I regret. You know how it is to work for newspapers. There's a limited uh, length, which is absolutely uh, uh, compulsory. So at some point, uh, even if they gave you, uh, uh, which was the case, uh, a relatively long space, you have to make brutal cuts everywhere because you are beyond the limit. You know. So I had referred to Habermas's uh, 
pro proposals, which you have very well summarized. And um, I wanted to say that uh, from my point of view, this was not sufficient. You know, this was uh, um, this would not the, this this idea of democratizing decision making in in two days uh, in, in the European Union would not be uh, enough. But I had written a parenthesis in which I said, uh, uh, although of course I side with him and I very much admire his uh, recent interventions. And then this had to be cut because it was too long. So what remains in the text is a phrase in which I say uh, uh, Habermas's proposals are clearly insufficient, uh, which is a terrible uh, 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 phrase. I don't know if you will see it. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, his propositions, I think, uh, are roughly speaking, and I'm not surprised that his last book is called Zur Verfassung Europas, uh, uh, on the Constitution of Europe. They are a consistent and, uh, and, 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 and very um, um, a committed uh, proposal to transform Europe into a federation in the proper sense. So the federalist project for Europe has been there uh, since the beginning. And uh, um, you could give the, the names. I mean, this is not the Jean Monnet Schumann policy. It's Altiero Spinelli and, and people like that. So they had a project of a federal Europe. And many good uh, uh, spirits, many uh, intelligent minds, people who are very different. Uh, uh, they come from different countries. They are philosophers. They are legal theorists. They are uh, um, economists. They are um, uh, um, industry uh, 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 managers. Uh, they are trade unionists, etc. are now uh, 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 returning to this idea. Let's hope it's not too late. That's the question. Yeah. But then the obstacles, of course, were very strong. And many of these obstacles, I have to say, these obstacles came from two different sides. These obstacles, they came from, they came from the national, not to say the nationalist side. France is extremely typical from that point of view. It was General de Gaulle, and, uh, and, and who is a great statesman. Nobody doubts that, uh, uh, who consistently opposed every move in the direction of a federal uh, uh, Europe in the name of national sovereignty. Uh, France and any other uh, countries should remain a sovereign country, leaving aside the question of what the, the notion of sovereignty really covers in, in today's world. I don't say it's nothing. We spoke earlier about this democratic element which has to do with the uh, uh, national um, uh, uh, territory. But it's also progressively emptied of its, uh, many of its real uh, uh, powers by the uh, contemporary transformation. So he was in favor of what he called the Europe of the nations, which was a code name, not to express uh, uh, cultural uh, um, uh, autonomy, or, but to express the opposition to the federal project. And on the other side, you had, again, be careful with, uh, uh, don't caricature anybody. But you had the British uh, uh, um, perception of Europe, which <coughs> today, again, is very uh, uh, strongly uh, expressing itself. Uh, of course, there's a very strong anti-European party in, 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 in the United Kingdom which seizes every occasion to explain that uh, uh, Europe is going too far, it's too... Uh, but their idea mainly was the idea of the open market. I mean, Europe, Europe should be essentially, should be mainly a, 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 a free circulation uh, uh, zone where every uh, um, uh, limits, if you like, for uh, uh, the competition between its own members and also external um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, capitals should be uh, uh, lifted. So that, of course, did not involve, from, the, uh, from this point of view, anything like a strong federal 
uh, organization. So it was criticized on both, on both sides. So now people like Habermas and others are returning to that. And I repeat what I said, let's hope it's not too late. Uh, basically, uh, I'm on that side. I don't say it's easy. Uh, it's easy. Uh, so something new has to be invented. The basic idea of the federation, of course, is you have two kinds of representation. Uh, it's a combination of two types of representation. One which is, uh, um, uh, which is universal, if you like. One where the citizens uh, um, vote and act and express their positions as citizens of the same uh, 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 federal uh, uh, entity. And I think that the, one of the basic conditions for that would be it's a circle. You know, what is a condition would be also a result. And conversely, would be that we at last have something like political parties at the European, at the scale of Europe. It's a dramatic uh, uh, fact that says a lot about the impossibilities of, of, of the European project that even if at the European Parliament you have some loose kind of uh, aggregation, they, they, they have a, a common uh, 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 secretary and, and all that, you have nothing like um, uh, uh, European political parties. The Greens tried that a little bit, uh, but the socialists didn't do it. It's incredible, uh, given the fact that socialism claims to be an internationalist uh, uh, point of view. You have no such thing as parties with uh, uh, um, uh, um, candidates and, uh, and leaders and programs which would cross the borders. Uh, but if that existed, the idea of a, a first level, universal level, uh, uh, could become a, 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 a reality if circumstances permit. And then a, f a federation includes another type of representation, which has, which has to do with the uh, preservation of differences, uh, be they cultural, or uh, uh, economic, or uh, 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 social, or religious, and so on. Uh, a federation is not is not a fusion, a merging of uh, uh, every uh, a local identity into one single uh, uh, homogeneous uh, um, uh, entity. So, uh, uh, particular histories particular interests have to be acknowledged. And I have to say that, like many uh, pro-Europeans, I had a tendency in the past to underestimate the importance of this, uh, of this level. Now, to combine both is, is the permanent riddle of, uh, uh, of federations. And of course, ideally, ideally, that would be easier if the situation were not, was not, a situation of uh, acute uh, uh, crisis as you uh, describe it. So in a sense, we are just in the situation in which it's needed, and we're just in the situation it win in which it's most difficult to, to, to create it. But then there is a final thing I want to say about that. Again, having the Greek example uh, uh, in mind. Uh, if you go to Athens right now, you'll hear very violent anti-European discourses. And one of these uh, discourses sounds like this. We were supposed to be part of uh, Europe, uh, 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 a would-be European uh, uh, Union or Federation, and now we are becoming a European colony, you know, a European uh, 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 internal colony, uh, because uh, our uh, state, our budget, is under control uh, uh, from uh, uh, um, uh, Brussels and, and the most powerful countries in Europe. You even hear Greeks because they have, they keep, you know, uh, and that's normal, I mean, in a sense, they keep uh, uh, um, uh, repeating the, 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 the memories of uh, two or three generations. So they tend, uh, you hear that, 
German imperialism is now colonizing Greece again as it uh, tried to do it during the last uh, uh, world war. This is possibly something that in the Balkans, in Serbia, could also uh, uh, become uh, an ideological uh, watchword. I, don't, I take very seriously the question of internal colonization. That's an extreme formula, but an extreme formula which comes inevitably to mind as long as in inequalities, economic and social inequalities, within something like a unified Europe are increasing and in fact exploding rather than uh, um, uh, uh, becoming uh, uh, cured and, uh, and, uh, and uh, um, uh, 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 limited. So I don't see it as a colonization on the side of, uh, of Germany, but I see it as a very uh, uh, dangerous uh, uh, process of widening the gap and therefore also the power relations between different parts of the uh, uh, European project. A federation is an absurdity in such uh, uh, a situation. It cannot live on such uh, um, uh, uh, bases. This is something that already <laughs> destroys uh, uh, some national countries. It's, uh, it's still weighing on the history of uh, countries like Spain or, or Italy. If you imagine it at the level of Europe, it's an absolute condition of failure for the uh, uh, European project. So I go just one small step. Uh, I don't add any rec recipe, any solution, but beyond what uh, Habermas proposes. What we need is not only, is not only a, a federalist, a consistent federal um, uh, project, political project for Europe, combining the two uh, opposites, uh, this, uh, this impossible, as you would say, unity of opposites, universalism and uh, uh, specificities, but also a social project for uh, 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 Europe. I mean, a project of development for uh, Europe that narrows the gap between uh, um, uh, levels of development uh, uh, between different parts of Europe and does not widen it. Now, if you ask me how to do that and who will do it and who will make the decisions, I know no more than you about that, you know. Thank you very much. So is there anybody who needs the voices for other parts from the audience who, who want to speak, comment, critique? Just mention your name and take the, the words. Speak loud, because I... I speak, don't. speak, yeah. <coughs> or in the microphone, if you can. Uh, yes, uh, my, my name is You speak so fast, I can't... Uh, <laughs> your name is blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's uh, Miriam. Miriam. Miriam, yes. yes. Yeah, Miriam, yes. Um, and and uh, I wanted to ask you to just... Um, briefly uh, elaborate what you started uh, in the first uh, discussion in the presentation of your book where you s started talking about the civil wars in former Yugoslavia in the context of the uh, struggle of classes and, and the Marx. Because I, I think it's a very interesting idea but I, I'm not sure I, I, I fully understood what you, what, what you meant. You know so much more than me about that. And first thing, uh, first thing would be, would you speak of a civil war or would you think this is an absurd uh, uh, category? Um, would you, um, you know, I will be even more provocative. Uh, I am not trying to have the, uh, the uh, uh, wheel of history turning the other way around. I'm not suggesting that... Uh, you should recreate Yugoslavia. I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's something uh, uh, from the past. I'm rather uh, thinking that uh, a problem of um, common, say, um, uh, historical um, destiny that for a number of reasons could not become addressed within the limits of that state, relatively recent, in fact, created uh, or created and recreated after the, the two world wars, uh, should probably uh, 
become addressed now in a wider context. But still, I'm very disturbed by the uh, expression former Yugoslavia, you know, ex-Yugoslavia. Uh, 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 this is like a, a, a phantom, a phantom uh, uh, entity that seems to be, uh, to be permanently haunting uh, um, our discussions and your discussions about uh, the history of this, uh, of this part of the world. What, what, what thing is that? I mean, former Yugoslavia. Something that existed only in the past and has left no traces? Or something that still somehow uh, 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 exists today, although not in the administrative uh, 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 form, and that we should try and take into account? After all, this book uh, of mine, which, uh, which is uh, a wonderful gift you are uh, uh, making, you are uh, doing to me, is uh, is jointly published uh, in Belgrade and 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 and, and Zagreb and is uh, 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 circulating uh, uh, across a, a a a border which is which which is not uh, um, which is a state border but uh, clearly has very different status. So you see, I I am. Um, I'm not easy with that question because I don't know how you perceive it. You mean me personally? Yeah, you are. <laughs> you in particular. Huh? Uh, to me, it was an interesting idea because uh, actually I was 18 when the Yugoslavia disintegrated. So for me, Yugoslavia is very real as, uh, as it is a country where I was born and where I grew up. So in, uh, in my memory, it is the, the result, ultimately, of the struggle of classes. And uh, I, I remember... You mean the existence of Yugoslavia? Exactly. And I remember vividly the, the, one of the last interviews given by one very popular uh, rock musician. Uh, he, he was uh, actually born in Macedonia. His father was an army officer, but he, he actually played music in Zagreb, in Croatia. His name is Johnny, Johnny Šturic. And in one of his last interviews in 91, when already it became apparent uh, what is going to happen, he was uh, almost uh, screaming uh, into a microphone of a Belgrade radio station saying, uh, at the bottom of this all is the struggle of classes. And, and the struggle of classes is always the essence of it all. And, and uh, the reason why this nationalistic madness is happening is because the political elite is desperately trying to find a way how to keep the wealth that they kind of uh, uh, gathered o o over the years. And uh, that, that's why to me it was very interesting that today, and this is the first time actually that I uh, heard an academic uh, uh, talking of the disintegra disintegration of Yugoslavia in, in, in that uh, mm -hmm. context. You know, I would be the last, really the last, to deny the importance of class struggles. I keep very much this, uh, this reference from my Marxist uh, 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 training. I'm aware that uh, uh, in history, as Marx himself explained in the Communist Manifesto, uh, class struggles are always there, but they're permanently changing their, their forms and their, and their content. You know? so, and this is not only uh, uh, the case when you switch from one mode of production to another, say from uh, feudalism to capitalism, but it can be the case even within the history of a single uh, uh, um, uh, society or mode of production. And after all, the discussion we had a moment ago, starting with Bauman, has really this uh, uh, stake. Are we still in the same mode of production? I mean, this is not... A, so this being said, uh, and uh, completely accepting the idea that uh, everything that we are witnessing today has um, a, a strong dependency, I would say, on the, on, on, the, on, the, on the contemporary forms of class struggle, I also believe that the discourse, the language of class struggle, in its communist form or uh, others, has been, I will be a little provocative, has been instrumentalized in, uh, in, in history. Uh, not always for bad, sometimes for good. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, 
it's provided, it's provided a, a, an ideological perspective, I would almost say a myth, uh, which helped, um, uh, um, uh, uh, say, overcome some very, uh, uh, um, uh, some very deep crises, but also imposed a, 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 a mythical, yes, or a stereotypical uh, uh, understanding of, of history. Uh, now, um, Yugoslavia was created uh, uh, after uh, 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 World War I um, uh, on purely on a combination of national or nationalist and liberal uh, uh, political principles. And then it was recreated after World War uh, uh, II on the basis of one variety of communist and Marxist ideologies. So with the notion of class struggle at the center. This was not absurd, of course. This was, this was uh, particularly the result, and I will never uh, underestimate uh, um, this. This was the result of the role that uh, uh, communist uh, uh, militants, workers, peasants, uh, 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 people in general had played in the resistance against fascism in uh, uh, Europe. Uh, but the consequence was to, as, as I perceive it, a, 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 well, first of all, of course, you had the phenomenon that you uh, also had at different degrees in other socialist countries, the fact that uh, increasingly it was the party bureaucracy that became, uh, 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 that monopolized uh, uh, power. When I was a young uh, uh, student and a young communist, we were told uh, continuously that Yugoslavia was very different from the Soviet Union from that point of view. Uh, uh, the Soviet Union would be much more uh, technocratic and bureaucratic. In Yugoslavia, you still had a sort of grassroots democracy, the councils, and so on. I'm not denying that. Uh, but essentially, uh, uh, towards the end, you, 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 you had a monopoly of power which in the, in, the, in the hands of a single uh, party and a single uh, uh, leadership, which of course uh, uh, was very far, was very far from the uh, uh, ultra-democratic ideals, in fact, of, uh, of Marxism and, 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 and Leninism. But uh, uh, more than that, you had, you had a, a a, a, a conviction shared more or less by um, by um, uh, uh, many of the um, uh, um, uh, militants and the communist uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, leaders and, and and philosophers that class struggle uh, was the single key to the understanding of uh, history. So from being something crucial. It became a sort of absolute, if you if you if you like, and to say the very least, I don't think that this helped understanding the kind of uh, 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 crisis that the Yugoslavian state uh, uh, was uh, was 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 going through. Uh, you see, I'm I'm very I'm very uh, careful not to tell uh, something that would. Uh, uh, claim to be the truth about your own uh, about your own history. I'm just trying to ask some critical questions, but I, of course, I, of course, uh, 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 never uh, 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 pretend that there uh, that class struggle is not playing uh, 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 a crucial role in, uh, and especially that political transformations are neutral from the point of view of social uh, uh, conflicts. They are not. I mean, uh, uh, the previous regime was not neutral, and the new regimes that uh, uh, arose out of the uh, uh, civil war, precisely, uh, or the ethnic conflicts, 
and in the framework of the new uh, uh, global relationship of forces are absolutely not neutral from the uh, uh, social uh, uh, point of view. And I perfectly understand that people, I, I, I don't believe that the solution is in the past. You will not recreate something that existed in the past. But I can understand that people uh, think about you know, what they have lost and uh, 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 how it could be uh, 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 recreated. Perhaps a rejoinder to the previous. Yes, my name is Yana Bajit. Is what? Your name is? Yana. Yana, yes, Yana. I teach at this institution. I was wondering, yes, perhaps a rejoinder to the previous question. A lot of people like to draw parallels between the period directly preceding the breakup of Yugoslavia and the state throughout the current situation in the European Union. And uh, there are some uncanny similarities, including the uh, talk of the looming crisis, primarily the crisis of the common currency. Um, the breakup of Yugoslavia was frequently explained from different perspectives as more or less a consequence of the economic inequality, in economic inequality between the republics. Oh, yes, I see. And uh, <coughs> hear about the European Union today is also frequently explained in terms of economic inequalities between the, yes. the constituent yes. units. Yes. I'm thinking, uh, my first question is why do you think there is more talk about uh, more what? More talk yes. of inequalities between republics or member states and less talk about inequalities within republics or within I states? See. And the second question is uh, referring to, to your analysis of uh, the Yugosphere, of former Yugoslavia. Do you think it's imaginable then in 5, 10 or 20 years' time there might be talk of the former European Union in the same ah, in which there is talk Terrible about question. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not, but I cannot, I cannot, I cannot rule out this uh, uh, situation. You know. The example I was taking in... Uh, in recent discussions, I'll return to your question about inequalities. But the example I was taking in, uh, in discussions uh, uh, over the last uh, one and two years, and which uh, before certain audiences uh, sounded uh, absolutely uh, uh, outrageous, uh, was the analogy between the history of the uh, European Union and the history of the Soviet Union. So it was not Yugoslavia, but it was the Soviet Union. And you know, initially it crossed my mind just as a, as a, as a, as a, as a rhetorical trick, you know, something that would provoke uh, uh, the discussion. I said, you seem to believe that the European Union is eternal, uh, that uh, uh, because it was uh, founded uh, uh, 60 years ago and it has progressively uh, uh, increased uh, 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 both its uh, uh, its uh, its territory and uh, and its uh, its capacities or its uh, uh, or the uh, prerogatives of the central uh, uh, institutions. This could never break out. This is crazy. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, the Soviet Union was created in 1917. And, uh, and broke out in uh, 1989 or, 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 or 90, a little later, I'm sorry, I mixed the two events. And nobody, or almost nobody, uh, everybody was speaking of, of changing the regime, democratizing the uh, regime in the, in the Soviet Union. Um, b um, I, some people advocating a more democratic form of socialism, others uh, uh, a more radical uh, uh, break. But there was very little talk. There was some, but there was very little talk about the possibility that the Soviet Union would break out, and it did break out. Uh, so um, I started using this uh, uh, analogy, just I repeat as a rhetoric uh, uh, a trick, to uh, have people becoming aware that uh, history is much more contingent, in fact, 
and aleatory, if you, if you, if you, if you believe, uh, than um, uh, they used to think. And also the fact that any political entity, be it a nation, uh, uh, don't exaggerate the difference between uh, 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 multicultural nations and uh, very centralized nations like France. And even a nation is not something that keeps existing just because it's existed in the past, you know, because it's existed for uh, 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 years or uh, decades or even centuries. It's something that has to be recreated in aleatory uh, 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 global circumstances through the something like the common will of its own people. Yeah? And there are circumstances in which this is not something that is guaranteed. So, so the answer is not that I prophesize the breakout uh, uh, of uh, the European Union, but I see it absolutely as, 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 as a possibility. And then we would have to face uh, uh, the consequences. And of course, this would repeat at a much broader uh, scale the kind of consequences that you uh, face in this, uh, in, this, in this country after the breakout of an existing uh, 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 federation. But then to return to your first, uh, your first question, inequalities. I'm not an economist, but I'm becoming increasingly uh, uh, interested in the, um, in the um, um, economic theory or discourse dealing with different types of global inequalities and different rates, if you like, of uh, development of inequalities locally and globally. So what seems to be the case, what seems to be the case uh, now, if you like, um, is an increasing polarization of wealth and, 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 and poverty uh, inside pre-existing uh, 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 entities. Uh, this is true for Europe. Uh, and this is true also for China, for example. Uh, uh, but also, at the same time, a greater, it's not the case that we are today in a homogeneous uh, 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 world, but a greater homogeneity, say, of the uh, 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 situation between different countries at, uh, at, uh, uh, in the world. So I'm not sure of that. I have, we, we have to discuss it. So, so the, 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 the huge gap, if you like, between the north and the south is, uh, is, is reduced. But the gap inside uh, uh, the north and inside the south is dramatically uh, 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 increasing. And it, to a large extent, our, our, even our social security uh, uh, systems or networks, and above all, our political systems, uh, especially in Europe, are not, are not made to address, have not been framed to address this kind of, uh, of, uh, of growing internal uh, equalities. And the fact that they, as I said before, because you see on which side I, 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 I stand, of course, the fact that the states and the European Union has been pushing in that direction are increasingly, are increasingly uh, um, uh, going in the uh, direction of unlimited uh, uh, com competition and uh, uh, does not help, of course, addressing this kind of, uh, of, uh, of problem. So on one side, you become more integrated in the, in, the, in, 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 in the global system where inequalities are more or less becoming uh, 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 homogenized. On the other side, you are facing a, an increasing uh, uh, incapacity of our political systems to locally address these issues. And this leads to what somebody called a delegitimization of the, of the, of the, uh, of the political system. And that's why it's so dangerous. I mean, that's why. So, okay. Thanks okay. very much Thank for you. round Thank table you. coming. Uh, okay.